as your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be your light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through. My dear friends in the Lord Jesus, you are heartily welcome to this live broadcast of the Holy Eucharist from Immaculate Conception Parish in Woodbridge here in the Archdiocese of Toronto. Today we celebrate this Holy Mass for Father Bressani Catholic High School here in Woodbridge. We are going to pray for the staff and for the students. We are going to pray for their families. We are going to ask God to grant them strength, especially during these very difficult times. May God console all those who are weeping, those who are suffering in their body, those who are suffering in their soul because of this pandemic, those who have lost a loved one and they are weeping and crying. We ask Almighty God, to console every member of Father Bressani Catholic High School and may God console all of God's people who are going through this very difficult time. We begin our ceremony in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, the ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Beloved, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? Now, discipline 
always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it many become defiled. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. God's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made, He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. My sheep listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went about the villages teaching the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I said at the beginning of this Holy Mass, we are celebrating this Mass for our Father Bressani Catholic High School community here in Woodbridge. The principal, the chaplaincy team, they have asked us to celebrate this Holy Mass so as to bring healing and hope to all the staffs and students of this school community especially 
because we are going through these uncertain times. And to all of you who are watching these Holy Mass from home, we hope that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will bring you the healing, the comfort, and the hope that you need to go through the storm that is COVID-19. My dear friends, have you ever had the experience of being rejected? Rejection is such a painful experience. When people reject you, rejection becomes very, uh, very painful, especially when it comes from the people you love and you cherish. When you are rejected by the people you love so much, the people you can take a bullet for, the people you get out of your way to help, when they reject you, it is so painful. And I can tell you that if you have never been rejected, don't get excited because one day you will experience rejection in one way or the other. People will reject you because of the color of your skin. People might reject you because of your looks. People might reject you because of the way you speak. People might reject you because of your accent. They might reject you because of your job, because of the house you live in, the kind of car you drive, because of, the, because of your finances, because you are broke. There are so many different reasons why people will reject you. And if people reject you, don't stay there fighting with them. Just look at Jesus Christ. Look at the example of Jesus. In today's gospel, which I just read from Mark, we hear that Jesus Christ went to his hometown. He went to be with his own people. And on the Sabbath day, which is a Saturday, he went to the synagogue. And in the synagogue, he was preaching to the people with power and with authority, and he was performing miracles. And the people were, they, they freaked out, they started complaining, saying, who is this guy? Who is this man? Where does he get this wisdom and knowledge from? We know him. We know his family. We know his father is Joseph the carpenter. We know his mother is Mary. We know his family in this community. How can he now claim to be an important person? How can he claim to be the son of God? Where is he getting this wisdom and knowledge from? And so the people did not believe in Jesus. And because of that, the, the, the gospel says Jesus was not able to perform many miracles in his own community, in his own village, because of the unbelief of the people. Why did the people reject Jesus? Because they were looking at the humanity of Jesus. They were not looking at the divinity of Jesus. They were looking at the son of Joseph. They were not looking at the son of God. They were looking at the son of Mary, the woman in the community. They were not looking at as Mary as the mother of God. The people were looking at Jesus Christ as the little boy who grew up in their community. And so they completely refused to see the divinity in Jesus Christ. And that is why he was rejected. Today I'm asking you, have you had the experience of being rejected? Today most of us, we feel rejected. We feel rejected, especially in this time of the pandemic. We feel that God has rejected us. We feel that the God we love so much, the God we pray to so much, the God that we cherish has abandoned us. We feel today that because, of, because God has walked out on us and walked out in our, of our world, we are now suffering. COVID-19 has taken total control of our world. We are now suffering because of COVID-19 and it seems God does not care. It seems God does not listen. Today, COVID-19 has turned our lives upside down. And many of us, we are hurting. Many of you students who are listening to me right now, you are hurting, you are angry, you are upset, you are frustrated because you have lost everything. You cannot go out to hang out with your friends. You cannot go to school to stay in your classrooms and study in person. You cannot go to your parties. You cannot go to church. You cannot hug your nono. You cannot hug your nona. 
We just had Christmas. You could not come together as family to celebrate Christmas because of the restrictions. You cannot go on vacation. You cannot go to work. And most of you are hurting. Some of you are hurting because you cannot, your parents have lost their jobs. They have lost their businesses. They cannot make money and put food on the table and a roof over your head. Some of you are hurting because you have lost your loved ones. You have lost your loved ones during this time of the pandemic, whether from COVID-19 or from other sicknesses. They were sick at the hospital. You could not visit them. They died and they had a funeral service for them, a funeral mass, and you were not allowed to go to church because of the restrictions. And so you're sitting there and you're frustrated and you're angry and you're bitter and you're resentful. And you're asking yourself, why has God allowed this to happen? And in the midst of your frustration and your bitterness, you are losing your cool. You're losing your peace. And maybe you're taking it on your parents. Maybe now, because of your anger and your frustration, you are giving your parents attitude at home because you're spending more time with parents at home. And now you're giving your parents attitude. You're talking to your parents, talking back to your parents. You've become a mean machine. You don't respect your parents no more. Some of you, you are constantly on your cell phones. You spend 24 seven on your cell phones. You spend all the time on your video games. You cannot do chores around the house. You cannot even make up your own bed. You can't make your bed. My dear friends, in the midst of your anger, I want to remind you that in the midst of the anger and the frustration and the bitterness, because COVID-19 has turned our lives upside down, I encourage each and every one of you to look onto Jesus, to trust in Jesus, to hope in Jesus. So many of you today, you're going through depression. You're going through anxiety. You're having, having anxiety attacks. You're having panic attacks. And so you're withdrawing from the family, withdrawing from, the, from your friends, and you're being by yourself because you think that you've reached the end of the tunnel and there is no light. My dear friends, I want to remind you, look unto Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Look unto God and ask God to help you in the midst of this storm. Cry out to God. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My dear friends, instead of magnifying your problem, magnify your God. Most of you, you we are going through these difficulties and we're magnifying our problems instead of magnifying our God. You are walking in fear instead of walking in faith. You are looking at the problem, you are not focusing on the solution. You are looking at the obstacle, you are not looking at the breakthrough. Children of God must stay positive and stay in faith. Because the Bible says with God all things are possible. We hear God, Jesus, we hear the psalmist. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping might endure throughout the night, but joy comes in the morning. God still loves you. God still cares for you. Look up to your God. Trust in the Lord. God has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. This Isaiah says in Isaiah 49, we hear God saying, I will never forget you, my people. Does a mother forget her baby? Even if a mother forgets her baby, I will never forget you. God has not forgotten us. God still loves us even in the midst of COVID-19. God still loves us even in the midst of the sickness, the chaos, the confusion, the pain that COVID-19 has inflicted on our society, inflicted on our families, and inflicted on our health. Yet God still loves us. God is still watching over us. Dear students, dear members of Father Bresani Catholic School community, to those of you watching us online at this time, I encourage each and every one of you to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Pray to Jesus. Instead of spending all the time on your cell phones and your video games, playing Call of Duty, playing Fortnite, you should spend some time reading your Bible, praying to Jesus. Download the Bible app. Spend time with the Lord because it is only in Jesus Christ that you find hope and you find strength and comfort to overcome the challenges of COVID-19. And to those of you who are going through depression and anxiety, some of you are thinking it is no longer fun to be alive. Some of you are hurting yourselves. Some of you, you don't want to move on. You don't want to carry on in life because of the discouragement, because of the disappointment. I want to tell you, my dear friends, whatever circumstance you're going through, if you cannot handle it by yourself, get help. Talk to your parents and they'll get you some help. Call your priest. Have us on speed dial. 
and we will provide you the necessary help that you need. Don't hurt yourself because of everything going on. Love yourself and love life. So we ask Almighty God to bless all the students and all the staff and support staff of Father Bresani Catholic High School. May God strengthen you. May God give you the strength and the courage to be able to go through this storm because there is light at the end of the tunnel because with God all things are possible. May God bless you. May God protect you all. And may God keep you all as the apple of his eye. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he met with opposition, yet he continued in a spirit of trust and hope. With confidence, let us present our needs to our Heavenly Father. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, priests, and deacons who proclaim the good news of the Lord, may they continue to live out their vocation as teachers of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are isolated as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, may they feel the comforting presence of the Lord in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, may they receive the care and relief they need and support from their family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the Father Brazani Catholic High School community, May they be carriers of God's peace, revealing God's goodness and love to those who need it most. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you are our light and our salvation. Help us at all times and keep us faithful to Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Healer of our every ill, night of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know our fears and sadness, grace us with your peace and gladness, spirit of all comfort, fill our Praise sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. 
And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. to see in the shadows of the night I will be your light over and rest in me do not be afraid I am with you I have called you each by name and follow me, I will bring you home, I love you and you are mine, I love you and you are mine. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, I would like to thank the staff of uh, Father Bressani Catholic High School, thank you to the principal, Ms. Sandra Abate, and to the chaplaincy team leader, that is Monica DiNardo, for organizing this mass for the school. We ask God to continue to bless Father Bressani School community, and uh, we hope that soon and very soon, with the help of God, we'll be able to see you again, we'll be able to come back to school and study in person 
will be able to see you in our parish community to gather as a community of faith to praise and to worship our God. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many more the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way. We, the daughters and sons of him, Built the valleys and plains. Praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many more the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way. In his wisdom he strengthens us like gold that's tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way.
Thank you, everybody, for watching this uh, live broadcast of the Holy Mass. We hope that you have been spiritually nourished and renewed. And we ask God, our Heavenly Father, to continue to bless each one of you, blessing your families, and keep you always as the apple of his eye.